it can be overwhelming coming into the world of hydroponics and aquaponics. There are an array of systems, each with their own champions, that will tell you that each system is better than the other for a variety of reasons. This video is going to look at all the systems in mainstream use within aquaponics and hydroponics. And in future videos, I will individually look at each system, giving the pros and cons and the variations on the systems that can alter their uses. Now there are people who champion specific niche systems that fall in between some of the systems I'm outlining today. If you have a suggestion, for a system that you'd like reviewed, please leave them in the comments below. But today, for the sake of succinctness, I'll be outlining the main systems used within hydroponics and aquaponics. Now, I like to think of the systems existing on a scale. On one end of the scale, you have air or oxygen, and on the other end of the scale, you have water and nutrients. Now, within the scale, all the systems exist and they all give a certain ratio of oxygen to nutrients and water. To start with, we'll outline DWC or deep water culture, which exists on the nutrients and water end of the spectrum. Most DWC systems exist with passive redundancy. Either they don't require electricity or once electricity is turned off, the plants still have access to water and nutrients. The best example of this is the Kratky method. In the Kratky method, Plants grow in a nutrient solution, which is completely passive and has no aeration and has no power requirements. Supplementation of oxygen, however, can be achieved with the use of hydrogen peroxide or H2O2. These are examples of systems that could be used within the Kratky method. The next method we're going to look at is plain DWC or deep water culture. Now, deep water culture requires aeration. An air pump and air stones is added to a cracky like system, and this supplements oxygen to the roots of the plants. A variation on the DWC method is the RDWC method, or reticulating deep water culture method. This is where you will have a reservoir separate to the reservoir that your plant is growing in and the water cycles through the reservoir to the reservoir of the plant and back, usually containing air stones within the reservoir and cycling the nutrients either through the top of the plant's roots or through the side of the container the plant resides in. This allows for multiple grow pots in a single system that reticulates and allows easy removal and replacement of the nutrient solution. This is also a popular method in aquaponics as the raft system where your plants float on a raft usually made of polystyrene and grow down into a reticulating basin is used in conjunction with the sump and the fish tank as a reticulating system to grow your plants in. It's used this way because it has a high tolerance for solids within the system. This brings me to the next major category. These systems are not passive and can harm your plants if a pump were to fail. This is an NFT system where a pump at the bottom is used to pump nutrient solutions to the top of a channel 
and the nutrients flow down the channel in a film and the plant's roots grow along the film of water where the roots are submerged on the bottom and exposed to air on top, which gives a 50-50 nutrient to oxygen ratio. The next system we'll look at is a flood and drain system. So a flood and drain system literally floods and drains the grow bed and gives the roots adequate exposure to oxygen and water and nutrients by cycling between the two. This is arguably the most popular in aquaponics because it has a high tolerance for solids moving within the system. The flooding and draining in this system is achieved usually through a pump on a timer which floods up to a drain pipe which then drains the solution back into the reservoir or a bell siphon where the pump floods the bed and the siphon automatically drains at a certain level. So the final systems we'll look at are the aeroponic systems. Aeroponic systems exist on the oxygen side of the system spectrum. They aim to deliver nutrients in droplet form to the roots suspended in a nutrient mist or fog. Within this category exists two subcategories, sprinkloponics and fogponics. Sprinkloponics, as the name would suggest, uses sprinklers to deliver droplets of water to the roots of plants. Fogponics uses atomizers to achieve a droplet size of ideally between 30 and 80 microns. But when starting out, a cheap alternative to expensive atomizers are these ultrasonic atomizers, which create a dry fog in the range of about five microns. So when using these techniques, keep in mind that larger droplets will result in fish bone like roots and finer droplets will result in pom-pom or fluffier roots. So I hope that this video has given you a good look at the spectrum that all aquaponic and hydroponic systems exist on. And I hope it's given you a better idea of where to go on your journey through hydroponics and aquaponics. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.